Welcome to Blender Rigid Body Physics Pathway to Mastery, where I deep dive into using Blender. Chapter 1 laid a solid foundation for using rigid body simulations within Blender. This is Chapter 2, which extends upon those foundations. Chapter 3 applies the skills developed so far by working through a detailed example involving the cell fracture add-on to smash a cup. Chapter 4 focuses on physics emitters and add-ons. I'm your host, Para8D. Let's jump straight into it. I'm using Blender version 2.83. And we'll start by deleting everything but the default cube, and we'll move it up on Z axis 1 to get it level with the ground plane. We we'll use our quick favorites menu to add it as an active rigid body physics object, add in a ground plane, and then add it as a passive object. And we can see it in the side panel, so it's the same as using the physics panel to add it. Reduce the timeline to 50 frames, and we'll play that. You'll see that it behaves exactly as we'd expect. But I want to comment on the orange dot, which is the object origin. So this is the center of mass for the object. When it's offset, that's offsetting the center of mass for the object and will influence its behavior within the simulation. So if we're not aware of that, it can give quite strange results, uh, such as this where it's outside of the object. An additional demonstration of the object origin issue, change it from collision shape convex hull to box, you can see that the box is centered around the object origin. So it gives results that are quite unexpected, but luckily the collision mesh is outlined, which makes it quite easy to see what's going on. If we set the origin to geometry, that fixes the problem right up. When it's on the default convex hull, it doesn't seem to be an issue. And it's important to stop and talk about the mass for a moment. It appears to impact the strength of the collision mesh. I first saw this in Andrew's all on chain video where he demonstrated the chain pulling apart when each individual chain link had a low mass. But once this mass was increased, the pull through was eliminated. And I experienced this as well on my Ashley 2.0 animation where I had these rattling cups and the pens were originally falling out of the cup. But once I increased the mass, they stay contained. I've also found that it is quite important to bake keyframes for each object as it's completed so that as additional physics objects are added to the scene, they don't interact in uh, unwanted ways. Because when extra physics objects are added, just throw Blender for a loop and it'll give you unexpected results, particularly larger projects that have lots going on. When baking a large group of objects, it may look like Blender's crashed, but it's actually just working through each object. Open the graph editor to see all of the keyframes that were added, and it's a horrendous mess. This is a lot of data, and we can clean it up with clean channels, clean keyframes, or decimate allowed change. This topic is beyond the scope of the video, so I won't go into any more detail other than this. After cleaning up my keyframes, I did see a 75% reduction in my file size, which was about 100 megabytes. Something that's caught me out a few times is when I've hidden an object, but it has physics applied to it. It will then continue interacting with other objects in our scene while it is hidden. I was recently called out by the hidden objects in a collection still colliding with my object. I right clicked and deleted hierarchy, and then that caused a phantom or a ghost object to continue colliding with my objects. The fix is to simply delete objects from within the viewport as you normally would. If we delve into the issue a little further, it appears that the objects become unlinked from the scene, however, the rigid body system still sees them. We can overcome it by moving the object to the side adding a new rigid body world and assign it, browsing within the Blender file and remove the offending objects. And using the Blender Python console, we can actually relink the objects back into our scene. And once they're deleted, it all behaves as you expect. So far, I've been using perfect shapes or perfect cube, but what happens if we have irregular shapes and more complex geometry? When it comes to stacking, the best thing is to keep it simple and approximate the collision shape with one of the primitive options, such as cylinder or box. You can see the sensitivity offset margin now it starts to push the objects apart, and that just does not play well when it comes to stacking. I noticed a strange gotcha. When everything was selected in the viewport, 
my frame rate dropped dramatically. This is likely because the viewport keeps having to redraw all of our selection. If we deselect the objects, my frame rate jumped right back to where it should be. I want to demonstrate once again the problem of two objects passing through one another, so I'm going to set up a situation where that occurs. I'll give it extra height so that it gains extra velocity, because the faster an object's moving and the smaller it is, the more likely it will pass straight through another physics object. So an additional way we can correct this, besides increasing the solve iteration step for a second, we can thicken the collision object. You can see that it still penetrates inside the object, but because we have that thickness now, it's able to calculate which side it should be pushed out of to correct the interaction. So as long as it's on this side of the center line, it should be ejected on the correct side. But if our cube is calculated to be on the other side, between iterations, it'll pass straight through. If you can't afford to have a great ugly floor, we can just have a visual plane that appears to be our collision surface, but use our hidden trick to have a physics object which is actually causing the collision. And you can see that it appears that that little plane is preventing it from passing through, where in reality it's our hidden object. But be sure to turn off in renders as well. Of course, we increase steps per second. This improves the accuracy of the simulation, and that is shown by how it penetrates the object far less. I originally thought the higher the step count, the better, but I found this strange bug. As you can see in this video, the more steps there are, it just stops. Um, so use with caution. I'm going to review the property source under collisions. I skipped over it in my first video, so I'd like to elaborate on it. We'll just delete everything in the scene, add in a UV sphere, add in a plane to act as our ground, add this one as a passive, and we'll change it to mesh. Add this one as an active, change the shape to mesh, and this is what we're going to play with the source under collisions property. So base is at the start of the simulation, deform is uh, it changes throughout the simulation, and the final is uh, the completed result. So what we want is deform to have a plate with it, and we need to check deforming so that It'll update. If we run the simulation, that's working well. Let's add in some shape keys. And we'll keyframe 0 to 1. And play that. It simply works as you'd like it to, which is really great. Uh, it works for more than just shape keys. We can also add modifiers in. And then we can keyframe this as well. 0 effect to some effect. And we can also undo the shape key. The shape key turning off and the modifier coming on and run the simulation. It just seems to work, which is uh, really fun, so I'd have a play with it. I thought this was a neat implementation of using a fixed constraint to hold these two chain links together until I was ready to break them. I'll show you how I put that together. Add in our torus, edit mode, stretch it out as our chain link, our edge mode, edge split. And we need to fill in these faces. F to fill the face, and F again. And I want it to break apart here, so I'll add another loop. And we can just change its position if we like to mix it up. Island select and separate selection. Reset the origin. Now we have our two pieces of the chain. Add both the rigid body active. We need this to be mesh. We'll just get into position and add in a cylinder to hold our chain. Add that one as rigid body passive and that should be fine on hull. That's looking pretty good. Magic comes in when we use the constraint. To use a fixed physics constraint. Now it's held together on frame 30. We'll enable breakable on frame 30. So I to keyframe that and turn it off the frame before, lower the threshold. And that's how we can break a chain link. Now it's also worth mentioning that Blender uses the Bullet software, which is open source physics software. And we can see that listed in the Bullet software Wikipedia under the Blender features page and also the Blender license page. Feel free to leave a comment, suggestion, or let me know how this series has helped you out. Reach out on Twitter or Instagram at para8d and link me your physics creations. Thank you so much for dropping by and I'll catch you next time.